Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen. If you recall, in the last session, we had been discussing measures of effectiveness of the communication that we have. And during the same period, we had been discussing measures of exposure or how measure of attention that a communication strategy or what we say the communication uh, involves with the consumer. Uh, if we go back a little bit, we would understand that the reason for measure is based on the feedback system. The model that we had shown was from sender to the receiver or the target, and there are so many issues in between when the message is being transmitted through the encoding system, through the media, then it has to be decoded by the consumer or the target. And it was very important for us to understand how the feedback loop would take place. Because once the feedback is uh, are developed, there is possibility of improving the communication. Because the goal of communication basically is that whatever the target was trying to send the message as it was, must be inter uh, interpreted in the same form. It should be understood in the same exact form. Uh, while we were discussing that, we had talked about measures of exposure in terms of who saw the message and how many saw the message. And in that, we had discussed certain profiles that are developed, the audience profiles. Uh, there are syndicated services that provide these profiles. We also have certain devices, electronic, which study uh, who is watching what program uh, and also how much time the person spent on it. And also uh, there are certain times diaries used to record all these statements. We had also been talking about the attention that a message normally tends to draw. And we had said there are some electronic systems that have been developed. But the reason for that was that before a message is sent, it should be evaluated beforehand on how much attention it draws. So when a message is prepared, it is normally shown or a pre-trial or a pre-test takes place. And in that test, a group of people, which is very similar to the target segment to which the message is aimed at, is normally invited and people are made to watch this ad. And they are electronically, again, their facial expressions, how the eyes move, they are all recorded so that you know you can understand how much attention has this message drawn from the consumer. In the same form, since this is pre-testing, we also have something what we call as the post-testing system. And in this post-testing, we normally try and check what is the recall status of the message. Can people recall the message? Uh, unaided or do they have to recall the message with some help? Uh, there was this uh, concept where unaided recall you normally ask from the top of the head. That means you just ask them uh, during this period, did they see some ad and then can, can they write these ads down or the, the theme of the ad and what particular aspect about the ad that they did like. Uh, sometimes they are aided recalls in which specifically we tell them that in this magazine, there was an ad. Can you recall that particular ad and suggest what was that which held your attention? Now, this is a basic format by which we can find the impact of uh, advertisements. Remember what we had been discussing at that point of time, that once we have completed this, we will be moving on to the message strategies or the communication strategies, which required us to go through a process of understanding what basically is going to be our massive strategy. And as we have been suggesting all along, that in strategy, unless you have the objectives clearly laid down, you will not be able to develop a proper strategic approach to even in the area of communication. Why? Because you need to target the same communication to the individuals. You have to choose the particular media. You have to then select the way you will encode the message. And obviously, then you will be sending the message. And there are so many other factors 
which are very critical in developing the massive strategy. Before we go into this detail, let's just look at what are the basic objectives that communications normally have in our uh, area of uh, developing a communication strategy. These objectives could be any one of the following. You could require, let's say, creating awareness in the uh, consumer market or in the target market. You could also try and change an attitude towards a particular behavior. Uh, for example, we have already discussed uh, smoking. You could also try and create equity, brand equity as a matter of fact. You can try and improve a favorable impression for a particular product or uh, a brand. You can also try and communicate. There are other areas, for example, you may like to bring about a change in the behavior that is that you might like to encourage a person to buy a product. We have already suggested that creating awareness, improving favorable attitudes, and so on and so forth are more easy to do, but creating sales or increasing sales becomes a little difficult. However, all these objectives have been listed down, and we need to break them down into the primary objectives uh, and then there are certain subsequent objectives that we like to meet. Like I was saying, uh, creating awareness is one of the most important uh, communication objectives. Uh, we might have, a, see, we talked about, if you remember, we talked about post-purchase dissonance. Communication sometimes is also used to reduce this post-purchase dissonance. And please remember that whenever we talk about communication, it just does not only mean uh, an advertisement. It can also mean a letter which might go to support a person's purchase. Uh, it could be also a guarantee card which specifies certain conditions for support. It can also have a, a, a try to create goodwill towards the company or a corporation or the product or the brand itself. And it can create, let's say, a favorable image about a product which does not have a favorable image at this point, or it may have a neutral image and you want to push it, or you can have a, a combination of all these uh, 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 objectives. One way or the other, you can combine a few to make sure that you have been able to understand exactly. The reason why it is, because if you want to create awareness, then the ad would be different then if you were trying to promote sale, maybe in promoting the sales, you might like to add some kind of a discounting feature or some other method. But if you're trying to create awareness, then you most probably will be using a number of media channels to try and get people to understand that this product has come new or the brand is new so that people can at least start recognizing. Again, we need to remember, as we had talked about uh, uh, some time back, that unless there is awareness, there is no way that you can ensure that the person is going to buy the products. And the end result of all advertisements is to be able to promote the product in such a way that uh, it will be preferred against a cons cons uh, competitor's product. But it is not possible if the consumers are not aware that this product or brand is available in the market. So the logic is that if you are trying to create awareness, uh, would be a little different in trying to strategize the message or if you want to promote a particular message, uh, in the sense promote a particular sales of a particular product. Now, this being the objective, we now need to look at how to select the target market because we said all messages must be targeted to a particular set of consumers. We already recognize the fact that all individuals have different traits, different characteristics, different experiences. Therefore, their overall behavior, their overall approach to receiving the message, decoding the message would obviously be totally different. Therefore, as research has suggested that one single ad for the whole market normally will not succeed. So what do we do when we want to make sure that our ad will be cost-effective in the sense that if it reaches the people 
then it must be able to generate some sales to compensate for the cost that we have incurred in sending the message. To do that, what people tend to do is, as we have already suggested, that in the strategic marketing framework, the STP framework, we normally first have to go for segmenting the market. And we recognize that in segmenting the market, when we know that every individual is different, we try to pick up one criterion or one criteria or one relevant uh, uh, variable where we can collect a group of people who are homogeneous in that particular aspect. So, for example, uh, some people are who like golf, playing golf. There are other people who like polo. Uh, another group might like, a larger group might like to watch uh, cricket. Now, therefore, segmenting or segmentation can be undertaken based on the nature of the desire of the activity of the market. So we can group these people together and it's some relevant characteristics which we are interested in. For example, if we look at uh, a Nike uh, shoes, they have a number of types of shoes. They produce shoes for golfing, they've produced shoes for squash, tennis, cricket, football, so on and so forth. Uh, but they do not would, would not like to just send their message totally. Uh, I mean, if they want to target specifically the tennis players, it will be cost ineffective if they would just launch their advertisement everywhere. What would they do? They will try and segment uh, the kind of uh, group which is interested in tennis and then try and profile uh, uh, in the sense that how, what kind of magazines do they read? what kind of restaurants to go to, what kind of other activities they perform so that they can develop specific targeted messages for that particular uh, segment. Uh, that is what also helps them to also know ke, what kind of programs would they be watching. Now, Logic says if it's a tennis player or a, 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 a group of people who love tennis, then most of the time when uh, international competitions between uh, tennis, for example, Wimbledon takes place, then they will try and target their messaging during that point of time, whether it is on, if, if it's being shown live, then they would like to target the uh, particular television or the channel which is going to show it. And they would not like to show their uh, message on generally every kind of television uh, uh, channel. Obviously, they, it will be focused. Therefore, what the strategist suggests is that in one category, for example, Nike shoes, it's a broad category or a broad product category, we develop a generalized message in terms of shoes. And then we develop a specific targeted messages for the types which are used differently. For example, there could be a, a message which goes towards the uh, squash player group or people who are interested in squash. Another group might be targeted towards football players. The third might be targeted towards tennis players and so on and so forth. So an umbrella uh, message is created to promote the Nike's shoe uh, segment uh, or, or shoe industry or shoe area and then specifically target each message to the specific group. Uh, Secondly, this was related to the kind of uh, uh, message that is created. However, the second part of this is that the strategy would involve that rather than choosing only one media, the logic is that all these segments are attracted to different types of media, different kinds of magazines, they read different kinds of uh, uh, items, they may read different kinds of newspaper sections, they might also watch different types of TV programs. So what we tend to do is that we might like to select one media uh, uh, rather than using only one media, we select that particular media which is the most important uh, and that is where bulk of your advertisement will go. But then we also try and send messages to different other medias to complement this major uh, media. So if you watch, sometimes you will see that uh, the newspaper ad becomes the critical ad framework. 
and then part of the ads are also launched in through the radio uh, sometimes they are broadcasted through the television but bulk of the advertisement is done on uh, a newspaper advertisement or written advertisement or through the magazines the logic is the same because various people have different uh, uh, interest in medias so the idea is to be able to attract or reach out the the real uh, group that we are interested in and do not lose out on these particular areas now once we have done this obviously like i said the first thing is the sender has to decide what kind of objective he has for the uh, communication then he has to select the target and once he is clear as to the objective and the target market because target has its own traits and characteristics and so on and so forth it then decides what kind of media strategy would it use now what happens is that the advertisers they have their own profiles of their consumers they have their they have developed that profile having studied various traits in the segments and once they have targeted onto a particular segment they profile that segment and the profile would set up their uh, demographic characteristics their psychographics maybe value maybe attitudes and lifestyles and activities all they bring that together a problem ye hai ke the this profile must also match the media profile now what is media profile media profile basically means ke that group which particularly either reads that media or watches that media or listens to that media to unke bhi kuch characteristics honge misal ke taur pe there are dramas hote hain usme as we have studied and it comes to us that most of the time ladies watch uh, dramas particularly and men may like to watch sports this has been a particular controversy in the western world where the husbands always want to watch the sports events on the television and the ladies would also always like to watch dramas so they also profile their uh, their their audiences and it becomes therefore logical that the profile of the consumer is matched with the profile of the media and where they two fit that particular media and the target when they fit that will become the choice of the media for the advertiser in that same area what they try and do is what do they do how do they collect this data and information if you know most of the time these informations are available either on the credit card system purchases uh, sometimes you are asking for filling up the forms on the websites so and so forth so all this information is normally collected is available with companies who do this kind of research and the idea behind this is that the company which is going to advertise or the uh, what they call the sender has to make sure that there is a fit between his interest of the interest group or the target group as well as the comp- the, the media uh, those people who are going to be reading that kind of information or watching that kind of television so that uh, they make the most of the dollars or the rupees they spend on advertising the approach that is to be used is rather than go and just look at uh, one single most important in the opinion of the marketers the media what we do is that we select the media category a misal ke taur pe agar company samajhti hai ke the jo unka target market hai that's more closer to readership uh, uh, group that means wo padhte zyada hain ya unka interest is in reading and obviously reading mein kai cheeze aati hain there could be newspapers uh, magazines uh digest and so and so forth so phir waha selection karni padti hai for various purposes again and we have all discussed these because the choice of the media also has an impact on the credibility of the message like we said uh agar uh, aapne business ke logon ko target karna hai and you want to send a message to the business people particularly in the western world the message can be given to fortune 500 magazine it could be sent to business week it could be sent to economist ab wahan se decide karna hai ye to kar liya ke ye media category kaun si hai then we need to decide which particular 
media do we choose? Which particular magazine or journal do we choose to send our uh, uh, message or to send our advertisement to? It's the same thing we do with uh, the television uh, systems where if we decide that television is the most critical area, but then on the television there are a number of channels that are available. We need to therefore decide which channel and then what program would be the one where we can put our advertisement for this particular uh, aspect. Now, this thing is obviously and we need to keep repeating to ourselves that all this will depend on the product and the service as well as the objective that we have targeted on. And I think we started from the concept of setting objectives and then uh, coming on to the other areas. So, this product or service is very critical hai to be able to decide the real media that will uh, give you the best service in terms of uh, making effective uh, contact with the target market. We also have something we call the web page development, which is now becoming a very critical thing. And most of the companies tend to develop their web pages and put them on the internet. Three factors जो हैं वो web के हवाले से बड़ा critical है कि उनमें ये कम से कम चीजें होनी चाहिए. Number one, it should be easy to navigate, which means basically it should be user friendly. So whatever the web page, it should indicate how best to uh, browse through the uh, site. उसमें मुख्तलिफ चीजें दी जाती हैं. And it is always easy for the the person who is visiting because he does not want to try and uh, entangle or uh, solve the mystery of how to go through the process. So he should be helped in the um, the process in which he would go through the site. Second, uski under uski apni quality hai. That means aesthetics hai. It should be pleasing to the eye. It should be developed in such a way that people feel happy to visit that particular uh, site and should not be boring kind of a thing. Finally, there has to be some kind of a security arrangement provided because People are very reluctant to give information, particularly if web site purchase purchase you have to pay with the help of credit cards and so on and so forth. So, much information is given the computer. And people, uh, mostly, particularly in Pakistan, this is very common. Hai. People are very scared of giving any information or detail on the uh, web, which is also very significant in the Western world, but maha systems kuch aise develop kar liye gaye hain ke security khasi control mein hoti hai, lekin phir bhi people are very scared. So you have to ensure the visitor that all the information that is being provided by them will be secured and will not be available for use or for wrong use. Now we have already discussed the media choice or the media strategy. We now look at the message strategy itself. Why? Because we have already discussed the sender has to determine the objective. He has to select the target and he has to now see the, uh, okay, now he's already seen the media that he will be choosing. Now he has to come to conclude how would he give the message? What would be the method that he will present his message most effectively in the chosen media? Uh, for example, agar media uh, usne choice ki hai tv ki aur television advertisement ki to uska jo ma message ka tarika hai that would be more different than if it is going to be broadcasted on a radio or if it was going to be shown on a newspaper uske andar jo message content hai wo bilkul mukhtalif hoga what is a message itself now that would be the first thing we'd like to figure out it can be an idea somebody has in his mind it can be a thought it could be an attitude that you want to show, it could be an image, or whatever information that sender wants to be conveyed to the target or the receiver, whatever it is. To make this happen, to be very accurate in what is to be said, to communicate an idea or a thought, or to create an image or whatever, the sender has to know what has to be said and why is he saying it. And we have already covered the concept of why when we said that we have to set the objectives. Now, what has to be said is therefore very critical. To be able to know what has to be said, we have to know the characteristics of the target. For example, agar 
मैसेज देना है कुछ गांव के लोगों को तो उसकी जो वर्डिंग है वो मुख्तलिफ होगी फ्राम द वर्डिंग दैट मे बी यूज फॉर अ यूनिवर्सिटी गोइंग स्टूडेंट और अ बिजनेस मैनेजर ऑल मे बी दैड इज फॉर द सेम प्रोडक्ट बट उसमें जो कहा जाएगा जो मैसेज दिया जाएगा वो इन तीनों के लिए मुख्तलिफ होगा इर रिस्पेक्टिव अब अगर आप देख रहे हो तो कई दफ़ा एड्स आते हैं जिसमें मोबाइल फ़ोन सर्विस के मुतल होते हैं तो अगर गाँव की सेटिंग दिखाई जा रही है तो चाहे वो कंपनी जो सर्विस प्रोवाइड कर रही है वो वही मैसेज देना चाहती है कि यूज करें उनकी सर्विस या उनकी सर्विस में कोई खास क्वालिटी है तो अगर ये मैसेज वो एक गांव के टारगेट को देना चाह रहे हैं या रूरल एरिया के टारगेट को देना चाह रहे हैं देर वुड बी अ डिफरेंट अप्रोच अ यूनिवर्सिटी स्टूडेंट स्कूल गोइंग पर्सन वुड हैव अ डिफरेंट मैसेज गॉन टू देम अगेंस्ट द मैसेज विच विल बी कम्युनिकेटेड टू अ बिजनेस मैनेजर and we see this distinction that is particularly created finally we once we have understood ke message mein bolna kya hai to phir words ka jo istemal hai that becomes very critical because we must realize that various cultures mein same word can have different interpretation so we need to be very very clear as to the usage of the word ka maayne kya hoga us particular context mein so we cannot afford to use a word without recognizing ke uske jo impacts hain ya implications hain wo kya hain now uh, once we have decided the broad media strategic outlines we need to remember as we have discussed that the message must relate to the characteristics of the product as well as the uh, target market and in this a major model has been um, involved and we have already discussed that when we talked about the elaboration uh, likelihood model where the thought process was kyunki ab message ko determine karna hai ke hona kya hai to usme normally what we look at is that if it is a highly involving product ya usme high involvement hai consumer ki to then we must take the central route to persuasion ab hum बात कर रहे हैं कि कैसे परसुएट करें ये मैसेज कस्टमर को या कंज्यूमर को सो दैट ही कैन डू व्हाट वी वांट हिम टू डू एंड दैट इज परहैप्स रिमेंबर द ब्रांड परहैप्स बाय द प्रोडक्ट सो इफ इट इज अ हाईली इन्वॉल्वमेंट प्रोडक्ट और हाईली इन्वॉल्व कंज्यूमर देन वी वुड लाइक टू गिव मोर डायरेक्ट रूट परसुएजन विच मीन्स वी मस्ट गिव दैम मोर इंफॉर्मेशन सो दैट the person can uh, think through analyze the data and then come to a conclusion on the other side if the product or the individual is low involved in the process of decision making or in the process that we require him to assess then what we do is we go to the peripheral route if you recall we had discussed this a peripheral route is the one where you do not talk or give more detailed information but we use the surrounding environment the ambience the the way the images created the way the colors are and so and so forth logic kya thi ke kuch logon ki zarurat ek khas qisam ki hai and that is why we will be giving them the kind of message that they want now having done this now we must also look at ke message ka jo structure hai ya uski presentation hai wo kaise ki jaye isme there are a number of points that we need to consider for example रेजोनेंस थेरी है जो सजेस्ट करती है कि इमेज में उसको क्या डाला जाए जिससे अटेंशन जो है दैट इंक्रीजेस एंड द रिकॉल ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट और द मैसेज आल्सो गोज अप देर इज दिस मैसेज फ्रेमिंग कॉन्सेप्ट इस पे थोड़ी सी हमने लास्ट टाइम भी बात की थी बट नाउ वी विल गो इन टू अटल बिट मोर डिटेल देन दिस वन साइडेड एंड टू साइडेड आर्गूमेंट्स एंड सो एंड सो फोर्थ सो लेट्स गो एंड लुक एट वॉट इज द रेजोनेंस थेरी रेजोनेंट थेरी का जो इस्तेमाल है वो नॉर्मली इट इज डन वेन यू हैव विजुअल्स क्रिएटेड और उसमें वी यूज डबल मीनिंग थिंग्स टू सजेस्ट द एक्चुअल मैसेज फॉर एग्जाम्पल जब ट्रेवल करते हैं तो लोगों को सिकनेस हो जाती है वॉमिटिंग होती है दे हैव अ प्रॉब्लम तो वन ऑफ द एड्स ट्राई टू शो कार की जो सीट बेल्ट है उसका जो बक्ल है उसके ऊपर जो बक्ल है उसकी जो शेप थी वो उस दवाई की थी जो टैबलेट्स या जो उसका कैप्सूल्स का जो पैकेट है वो सीट का बकल बनता था 
the message was now obviously the relationship was between travel uh, sickness and the remedy or istemal kya kiya unhone remedy ko bakal mein istemal kiya kyunki we sit in the car and that was the approach that they used aur isme wo resonance theory ka ek idea aapko mil jata hai ki there is some kind of a relationship which is tried to be intended aur isme kai dafa pan jiska matlab hai thoda sa mazak kiya jata hai jisse message thoda yaad zyada rehta hai the idea is that if it is recall and you want to uh, can i remember the ad it has been researched and it is determined that this kind of uh, approach increases the memory and increasing the recall system second aspect is how do you frame the message now you can frame the message by giving a positive frame which means that all the arguments that you given suggest the outcomes that are desirable and the person will have but a negative frame would be that you are trying to say what you will lose if you don't do that or if you don't buy the product or if you don't uh, 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 you know uh, adopt a particular behavior isme ek badi important cheez hai and i will use the same example of uh, cigarettes that when you are trying to change the person's behavior you normally approach it with a negative uh, approach and say cigarette peene se you will fall sick which means uh, the outcome is going to be negative and not happy is maybe there are a number of conceptualizations we have already suggested and it also depends again on the type of individual agar ek individual has independent image that means he looks at himself independently he is very much aware of who he is then he will prefer positive uh, uh, information which says what would be the outcome which will fit in with his self image but those people who are interdependent for their image which means basically they depend on other people to define who they are or in other words jo dusron ki taraf dekhte hain ki wo bataye ki wo kya hai ya kaun hai to unke liye negative frames are considered to be more effective finally in the message framing contest we find that there is research which suggests that if there is more processing time available that a person can have time to go through the information flow then it is much better more effective to use the positive frame but if there is less processing time then the logic would suggest that we go for the negative one after this we have this context of the one sided or two sided argument uh, which basically suggests that kya ek hi baat kahi jaye that means can we suggest superiority only or would it be better to also show if there is a particular weakness ab isme counter claim is the basic issue what has been suggested is that if the ad can be countered by the competitors ya competitors us logic ko ya aapke argument ko counter kar sakte hain to then it is better to yourself use the frames both usme there has it's a very difficult thing to do you cannot just go and talk all the negatives or all the positives but you have to balance it out in such a way that the negative information that you give about your own product uh can be compensated with other message and make that negative thing neutral misal ke taur pe a good example is that hair growth oil manufacturing company which had promoted ke oil jab aap istemal kare to baal badhte hain to what they did before uh, even they wanted to go and talk about the success of their product they suggested that 60% of the people who used their brand had moderate to very high growth on the hair on the head only 30% showed little growth and 16% showed no growth now what they have done is that they have presented the negative side also because had they gone and said this product makes the hair grow for everybody which would be the very positive area to usko agar competitor counter kar de and would prove bhi kar de ke kuch log aise bhi hain jinko istemal karne se koi fayda nahi hua to that would be more dangerous so what we have done here is that rather than totally claiming superiority we have tried to create disclaiming the whole thing with a little negative frame so that we know exactly what we are doing 
इसके अलावा वट वी हैव इज दैट द थर्ड एस्पेक्ट इज डू वी गो फॉर कंपेरेटिव एडवर्टीजमेंट विच मीन्स शुड वी कंपेयर आर सेल्स विद द कंपेटिटर्स प्रोडक्ट कई लोग इस चीज को पसंद नहीं करते एंड पर्टिकुलरली इट हैज बिन सीन इन द कल्चर्स दैट दिस यूज ऑफ कंपेरेटिव एडवर्टीजमेंट इज मोर प्रोनाउंसड इन अमेरिका पर्टिकुलरली बट नॉट सो प्रोनाउंसड इन अदर कंट्रीज कंपेरेटिव एडवर्टीजमेंट का फायदा क्या है वट कैन यू गेन आउट ऑफ कंपेरेटिव एडवर्टीजमेंट वन इज दैट इट इज वेरी यूजफुल फॉर द प्रोडक्ट पोजिशनिंग स्ट्रैटी वेन यू आर पोजिशनिंग योर सेल्फ इफ यू रिकॉल द पोजिशनिंग मैप और द परसेप्चुअल मैप देन एट दैट पॉइंट यू आर ट्राइंग टू डिफ्रेंशिएट योर प्रोडक्ट फ्रॉम अ कंपेटिटिव प्रोडक्ट एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू डू दैट यू एक्चुअली हैव टू मेक अ कंपेरिजन बाई डूइंग दिस कंपेरिजन you establish your product in exact position next to the competitor or away from the competitor whatever your goal or aim is so this comparative advertisement becomes more significant when we are trying to position the product it also helps selecting the target market why because a particular market might be using a particular brand competitor's brand and if you want to uh, suggest that your product is not for that particular group but it is targeted at a very exclusive kind of a group then using a comparative ad could be very interesting uh, for example uh, hotel ka ad hai so you might be able to say that our uh, uh, hotel is not for tourists uh, which automatically suggest that you are targeting into something or we can say that this hotel is only for the business people and not for travelers which categorically states what kind of a message you are giving and us message mein jo business ke log hain they automatically uh, understand what kind of facilities and what kind of categories are we talking about iske alawa the negative thing about the comparative advertisement is some people tend to say that if you do comparative advertisement you are actually helping to recall the competitor's brand but strategically research has suggested quite a lot of research has suggested that that is not really true frankly it shows that those advertisements which use these comparative ads are more influential because it helps the individual to actually carry out a comparative kind of analysis immediately there and then and it also has according to research positive impact on intentions to purchase and also actual purchase so we try to suggest that uh, uh, if you are doing comparative advertisement then you are actually trying to encourage people to really compare but for that what is very important is your product itself the product has to be very categorically equal to the message that you are sending because we have tried to find out that or it has been suggested that comparative ads sometimes go across to mislead people yani ke wo logon ko galat andaaz de dete hain ya mislead karte hain unko galat raste pe le jate hain which is ethically not correct this is a very important concept and therefore when we are going to carry out comparative advertisement we have to be very clear as to what we are saying misal ke taur pe let's uh, let me give you an example uh let's say there is a toothpaste and he's the toothpaste advertisement says we are number 1 we are the best product now this this is a we understand that this is not a very correct statement because it is very difficult to ascertain or to find out who is number 1 on what category are we being number 1 but this knowledge is also available to the consumer because he understands ke jab aap exaggerate kar rahe hain aur jab aap really koi cheez communicate kar rahe hain isi toothpaste ke hawale se let's see another ad and the ad suggests that we reduce or we protect cavities more than any other ad ab yahan there is a confusion why because we are saying something which suggests that research has been done everything has been uh, analyzed and on the basis of this information the advertisement is suggesting that they provide protection uh, to the cavities in the teeth 
more than the competitor's product, which means all the other products have been evaluated to bring this kind of a statement. Now, if you look at both statements, there is a difference between the two statements. One is that we are number one. We know that this is exaggeration. But on the other side, when we say that we protect against cavities better than any other uh, product, we are actually claiming something which is very difficult to justify. In both areas, there is a problem. Hai, and we need to be very careful when we use these two uh, contexts. And as I said, that country specific bhi hai kai countries mein comparative ads are more popular and let's say 30 to 40 percent ads are comparative ads and in other countries it is actually tried to be avoided the fourth aspect of a message strategy relates to order effect ab order effect kya hai it means whether you place your ad in the beginning or at the end or in the middle each area has a different impact on its effectiveness फॉर एग्जाम्पल आपने देखा होगा इफ यू गो टू द न्यूज पेपर एजेंसीज और मैगजीन और इवन इन दिलीविजन एरियाज पहले एड की जो कीमत है वो ज्यादा होती है राधर देन द वन विच इज प्लेस्ड इन द सेंटर और प्लेस्ड एट द एंड इट इज देयर फोर सजेस्टेड दैट द ओपनिंग पेज और द फर्स्ट पेज पे जो एड होता है दैट इज द मोस्ट इफेक्टिव और द वन विच इज ऑन द लास्ट पेज और द इन साइड कवर्स ऑफ द फर्स्ट पेज and the last page that is what is generally suggested or kaha jata hai ki ads which are in the middle are not that effective the reason is the minute you see the first ad you have observed quite a lot of information before you start getting caught in all the other ads that are going to be located in the center uh that is established and therefore companies normally pay quite a lot of money to have their ads placed in the beginning or the end ye to clear hai लेकिन प्रॉब्लम कहाँ है कि जहां सिर्फ दो पोजीशन हो या फर्स्ट या एट द लास्ट नो अदर पोजीशन अवेलेबल इधर इट्स फर्स्ट और इट्स सेकंड हेयर देयर इज कंट्रोवर्सी सम पीपल सजेस्ट दैट द फर्स्ट एड इज इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज दे लुक एट द प्राइमेसी इफेक्ट एंड द अदर्स थिंक ऑफ द लास्ट एड बीइंग इंपॉर्टेंट व्हिच इज व्हाट वी कॉल द रिसेंसी इफेक्ट व्हिच मींस जो सबसे बाद में आया उसका इम्पैक्ट ज्यादा होगा सो वी हैव दिस आर्ग्यूमेंट ऑन वेयर डू वी ट्राई एंड फाइंड आउट विच इज द बेटर वन दर फैक्टर दैट वी ट्राई टू सजेस्ट इज कि जहां लो इन्वॉल्वमेंट हो दिस इज अगेन वी आर गोइंग बैक टू द इन्वॉल्वमेंट थेरी तो वो मोस्ट इफेक्टिव होता है शुरू में और जब हम आर्ग्यूमेंट दे रहे हों पर्टिकुलरली जब हम आर्ग्यूमेंट दे रहे हैं तो जो मोस्ट क्रिटिकल पॉइंट है ऑफ आर आर्ग्यूमेंट should come first uh, that again remember what we are saying is ki jab aap message ke andar kuch cheeze bata rahe hain you are trying to explain the positive uh, factors of the uh, use of the product or the outcome of the product to so, aap kya karte hain what you do is you try agar low involvement product hai to you try and put your first argument in the beginning but on the other hand wo kehte hain if the it's your high involvement product तो फिर आप अपना सबसे कमजोर जो फैक्टर है उसको पहले दें और लास्ट में सबसे जो आपका स्ट्रॉन्गेस्ट पॉइंट है वो लास्ट में आना चाहिए जो किसी को भी ले जाएगा परचेज बिहेवियर की तरफ या उसको कन्विंस करेगा तो दिस इज अ वेरी डिफिकल्ट सिचुएशन यू नीड टू बी वेरी केयरफुल हाउ डू यू प्लेस योर आर्ग्यूमेंट इन दी मैसेज इट हाउ डू यू प्रेजेंट योर मैसेज now we are also interested in the number of repetitions that are used in trying to make the recall process to be more towards your side that means your product or brand should be recalled in the first context so recall and repetition are linked together and the more you repeat the message the likelihood that the message will be retained becomes uh, higher we must also remember uh, linked with this is what we talked about द फेडिंग कॉन्सेप्ट वेयर कुछ अरसे के बाद एक मैसेज अगर आप छोड़ दें तो सिक्स वीक्स के अंदर अंदर द मैसेज का कंटेंट जो है वो भूल जाएंगे बट द लाइवलीहुड आफ्टर अ नंबर ऑफ रेपुटेशन इज दैट द ब्रांड विल स्टिल बी रिमेंबर वी आर कमिंग इन टू द काइंड ऑफ अपील्स दैट वी कैन यूज इन द मैसेज कॉन्टेंट एरिया नॉर्मली वी कैन यूज द फियर अपील और द ह्यूमर अपील विच इज नॉर्मली अप्लाइड और द थर्ड वन इज वट वी कॉल द अप्रेसिव अप्रोच 
फियर में द इम्पोर्टेंट पॉइंट दैट वी नीड टू वर्क आउट एज के दो किस्म के फियर्स पैदा किए जा सकते हैं एक है माइल्ड फियर दैट मीन्स यू आर जस्ट टचिंग द स्केयर एरिया ऑफ द पर्सन लाइफ द अदर इज वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग मैसेज कहा यह जाता है कि दैट इफ यू हैव टू स्ट्रॉन्ग मैसेज ऑफ फियर देन मोस्ट पीपल ट्राई टू रिजेक्ट इट एंड वंस दे रिजेक्टेड द लॉजिक इज के वो एक किस्म का कोग्नेटिव डिसोनेंस क्रिएट हो जाता है जिससे लोग भागते हैं एंड दे ट्राई टू अवॉइड दैट नाउ अ गुड एग्जाम्पल इज फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर जैसे मैंने कहा कि आप तो पहले डिनाई कर देंगे लेट से वी हैव अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग अपील नेगेटिव अपील और अ फियर अपील रिगार्डिंग स्मोकिंग तो इन द फर्स्ट इंस्टेंट वट विल हैपन इज इफ इट इज वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग एंड यू आर शोइंग अ पर्सन गोइंग टू डाई तो रिसर्च ये कहती है कि इट विल बी रिजेक्टेड पीपल विल स्टार्ट सेंग हाउ मेनी टेस्ट हैव टेकन प्लेस वेर इज द एविडेंस दैट सिगरेट्स रियली कॉज कैंसर और वो जो एविडेंस है वो कितना स्ट्रॉन्ग है इज देर अनफ इंफॉर्मेशन अवेलेबल टू आस टू डेफिनेटली जस्टिफाई और सजेस्ट दैट स्मोकिंग कैन कॉज कैंसर सेकेंड इज के द पर्सन स्टार्ट टेकिंग इम्यूनिटी काइंड ऑफ अ थाट वो ये है कि इट सेज ही टेक्स द इम्प्यूनिटी इम्यूनिटी विच मीन्स मेरे से ये नहीं मेरे साथ ये नहीं हो सकता विच मीन्स के टी बी है तो वो मुझे नहीं होगी कोई और पी रहा होगा तो आई डोंट केयर बट इट कैन नॉट हैपन टू मी द थर्ड इज के लोग उस थ्रेट को डिफ्यूज करते हैं जब वो डिफ्यूज करते हैं मतलब है उसको कम करने का तरीका उनका ये है मिसाल के तौर पर इफ द सिगरेट स्मोकिंग वॉज गोइंग टू प्रोड्यूस कैंसर और वी सजेस्ट दैट विल डू समथिंग ऑफ दैट वेरी नेगेटिव काइंड ऑफ अ थिंग तो वी ट्राई एंड प्रोटेक्ट आर सेल्फ बेस्ट सेंग हम तो फिल्टर का सिगरेट इस्तेमाल करते हैं या फिल्टर के साथ इस्तेमाल करते हैं सो देर फोर आई एम प्रोटेक्टेड मुझे कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है दिस काइंड ऑफ एन अप्रोच हेल्प द पर्सन टू अवॉइड डेसोनेंस और यह भी देखने में आया है कि कई जगहों के ऊपर जहां नेगेटिव और पॉजिटिव अपील इस्तेमाल की है वहां अगर वो सोशल फ्रेम से ताल्लुक रखता है इफ यू आर गोइंग टू यूज द सोशल फ्रेम and the person has got interpersonal contacts uh, with other people to so fear zyada effective ho jata hai now the second aspect of this uh, advertising appeal is humor according to beliefs and also research humor is more effective than it has been considered in terms of fear what is being said is that humor particularly uh, for well educated people humor uh, kind of uh, uh, advertising is humorous advertising is more memorable it rem- uh, is more recallable and we have already discussed if you recall uh, like, uh, some time back we were discussing uh, which kind of ad or which kind of uh, behavior from the aspect of uh, individuals is more categorical in terms of creating happiness or creating fun because not only that ad is affected by the behavior or the mood of the person but the ad itself also changes the mood of the people so it is normally suggested that humorous ads would have a little bit more uh, impact and effectiveness or dekhne mein bhi aaya hai ki most of the ads are uh, normally use the effect uh, humorous appeal or particularly agar humne pakistan mein bhi dekhe to 30 to 40% ads jo hain wo zyada tar appeal jo hai wo humorous karte hain lekin we have to be very careful again on the type of consumer or the target because sometimes these humorous appeals can also become uh, bothersome to some people because the either the context or the model or the environment is not conducive to creating that kind of humor jo third maine baat ki thi wo thi abrasive now abrasive is basically when you show some unpleasant kind of uh, scenes इस एक बड़ी क्या नाम है लॉजिकल चीज जो आई थिंक यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड इज के एड्स आया करते हैं जो कीड़ियाँ या मकौड़े दिखाते हैं जो हमारी फसलों को खाते हैं नाउ एंड दैट काइंड ऑफ एड इज नॉर्मली कमिंग एन एंड यू नो वॉचिंग दीज काइंड ऑफ इंसेक्ट्स और वट काइंड ऑफ वायरस और वट एवर दैट इज इज नॉट वेरी अपीलिंग टू सी पर्टिकुलरली इफ यू आर हैविंग फूड with that uh, television show going on sometimes people even show 
the insides of the stomach, particularly if there is heartburn, or the way the headache is taking place where you show a hammer going on to the head and you are banged on the hammer, so and so forth. These kind of ads, it is considered, have an impact, but only to those people who cannot actually express uh, their feelings to other people. And the only logic is that they believe that this advertiser is more knowledgeable about their behaviors or their feelings, and therefore, uh, they tend to use their products more often. Now, we are coming to the end of this session. What I intend to do is that I will pick up the rest of the section, which is very small, and that is very, very important. Uh, it is uh, the last, but it is most critical, and it will relate to the ethics of advertisement. Ethical issues are very important because as we have said, profiling is consumers' ki profiling, hoti hai, information is being used by various other people. So sometimes it's better that we look at the ethical issues in, in detail. But aaj what we have done is that we have tried to understand the media strategy, basically, uh, particularly related to the targets, the, the media choice, the message choice. And most of the time, during this uh, session, we have looked at certain strategic implications of the various component of the model. And in the next session, when I start, I will recapitulate this whole frame by showing you the model which I started with so that we can conclude very logically on the model itself. Okay, this brings us to the end of it. And uh, for the next time, Allah Hafiz. Thank you very much. <laughs>